Anyway, enough of that. I wanted to review these Bibles because they're they are my favorite Bibles. These are the Quintil series from Skylar. And so I have the four editions here. Um, so two of them are in goat skin. One is in cowhide because I rebound it. And this one is in calf skin because I didn't want to spend the extra money. Um, they don't have calf skin options on these. Otherwise, I'd probably have that instead. So let me start off with the oldest one and the biggest one. So that's this one. And I rebound this one in orange cowhide because it's one of my favorite colors. I bought this one used, so the um, gilding was already wearing off. It's really interesting. It's got like streaks of silver there. And I re-dyed the page edges so that it was a dark, a darker blue than it than it used to be. And so they all have the same, like if you go to the page, this page, um, where the page number is, oh, right there. So if you go to this page, um, this one or any of the other ones, it should be the same. Let me just test it on, on the newest one, this is page 931. So let's see. Here's on the newest one. This is the um, the thin line, and it is the same. So verse twenty one is right there, and it's also right there. And uh, verse fifteen starts right there, and it's also right there. So it's exactly the same. The um, let's see what differences. Oh yeah. Okay. So the differences are down here. Right here, all these uh, references. Let me see if I can get to them. Zoom into them, I mean. So those references are in black there. Whereas over here, they're red, which is nice because it sets it apart from the rest of the um, of the verse references there. Anyway, back to the um, the original one. They call this one the um, the brick. It's a nickname because of how thick it was back then. Well, I mean it's still thick, but now that we have the preacher's Bible, it doesn't compare in thickness. Um, so this is a really thick Bible, being a non-study Bible without any notes. It just has the the words. Of the Bible, and then it has references and uh, notes here. Just um, whenever there's a different reading, it'll be right here. So these are this is really nice uh, large print. I'm not exactly sure how large. It might be eleven, but I'm not entirely sure. Sorry about that. Um, again, this one is an orange cowhide with. Um, navy blue cowhide liner and it's semi-yap it doesn't touch it is a wide semi-yap but still semi-yap it's got uh, these gray silver ribbons I put five of them well four of them sorry I thought I put five I put four of them on there. I could have put five, I think. Oh, never mind. That's pretty much as much as... I don't like when they overlap. So I only put as many as can fit when, without overlapping. So that's the, the original Quento. And now I'll compare it to the second edition. And that's this one. So this is um, it's a little bit thinner, um, probably by a quarter inch or so. 
Uh, more than a quarter inch. Almost almost a half inch. I'm going to measure it. Uh, my ruler has some glue residue from rebinding, but I'll use it anyway. Let's see. So the the original one is about two and a quarter. And this one, the second edition is about one and three quarters. A little more than one and three quarters. So yeah, almost two, uh, almost half an inch. But the interesting thing is that the bleed through is actually very comparable. Didn't they didn't lose much in the way of bleed through or see through, whatever you want to call it. Um, the amount uh, that you see through the next page is still really good in the second edition, despite the pa the paper being thinner, which is how they got the uh, Bible to be thinner. And then we get to that same page, just so you can compare it. There we go. And I'll zoom in. So you see the bleed through? It is very apparent, but it also is very apparent over there on the other one. So this one is in blue goat skin, and the main difference between the two, well now that I've rebound it, it was originally in, in the same uh, color goat skin, but um, this one, I mean the orange one, originally had a blue goat skin cover just like this one, and um, what happened is that when I, I bought it used, and the cover wasn't um, in the best condition. On the outside it was okay, but just in the inside here the tab, uh, I don't know, it was it was a little iffy and I didn't want to keep using it like that. Um, so I rebound it. I liked how it turned out. Like I said, I really like blue. I mean, I like both blue and orange, but I prefer orange myself. So, again, this one, and it's got uh, gold, I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be gold, um, but because of the blue it kind of makes it, throws it off a little bit. And this one still has, oh, never mind, this one is when they, I guess that's when they decided to change the references there to red instead of black on the verse numbers. So after this one was released a few years later, they released the uh, small one, the um, what is it? Uh, personal size Quintel, and uh, the belief on this one is also really it's really good. It's pretty similar, even though um, again they went with thinner paper. It is very visible, and I think it's actually more visible in the video than it is. Well, it's about the same. But it's still, for the um, size of the Bible, the, the words are really easy to read.
So this one's actually in calfskin. And it is um, a paste down liner. As you can see here, it's just a piece of um, thick paper. Um, so eventually it'll probably start tearing here. If you take care of it, it really, it won't really last a long time. The nicer thing about this is that um, it doesn't lay quite, it doesn't lay flat on, in the beginning of Genesis, but it lays more flat than than the the one that I had, which was a um, I had another one that was also black, but it was in goatskin and it was leather lined, and that one was not as nice. It didn't lay as flat as this one does uh, closer to the beginning. And this one has maps here. And it has some lined paper, but it's not very good lined paper. But besides that, it just it goes from Revelation 22 to the lined paper. There's no um, concordance or anything like that, which I actually like because I like paper Bibles myself. I prefer reading from a paper Bible than from a phone. And same thing for any book, really. I like reading the paper version more than the uh, than on my phone or on a tablet or on a screen of any kind but when it comes to that so that's when when i'm going to actually read something for a while you know like a story or uh, a passage in the bible or a novel i'd rather read it on a book but if i'm doing research where i'm just looking up one word or a, like a really short phrase even if i'm looking up one verse i'd rather just use my phone because it'll be faster to find it as opposed to flipping through the pages so if i need to find something fast which i usually do when i'm searching the concordance i'd rather just use my phone it, uh, and i also appreciate that it takes a lot less space so here's this comparison you can see it's quite a bit thinner and this is when they started adding the um the raised spine hubs as opposed to having the tooled lines here they're really they're not very prominent they're kind of small um I, I think they started doing this with the new king james quintel the second printing um or was it the first printing i don't remember but they started doing it and it's stuck they, they do it now with all their their um, bindings it seems and then i'll bring out the the original one again just so you can compare it to uh, this one, <laughs> what a difference it makes. Yeah, big difference. But you can, and you can also compare my um, hubs as opposed to theirs. Theirs are kind of, um, they're, kind, they're, they are pronounced like you can feel them, but they're not as visible. They're very small. Mine are, um, mine are bigger not thicker this way not or not much thicker but they are raised higher so that's those and i'll leave this one for comparison to the next one. Oh, and yeah the other the other ones had nicer ribbons this one has thinner um it's not much thinner in the way of like the thickness of it but the width of it it's less wide So here's the newest one, which I just got a couple weeks ago on um, in a trade. Um, I trade. I actually traded an Allen reader, and it was because um, I already have a large print ultra thin from 2007. So I just couldn't justify having the reader um, since I actually like the other one better. And even though I have the Quintel, it is my favorite. Um, production of the new American standard so I thought why not get another one <laughs> so now I have one of each ed editions so here's the Quintel and it has the same thickness uh, it's the same thickness as this one as the um, so the thin line is the same thickness as the um, personal size one about an inch and a quarter if I remember correctly 
And this leather is a lot more flexible than the other ones. And I believe this is the leather lined as opposed to the second edition, I think was, um, was it leather lined? It was, well, it was leather, but it was um, bonded leather, I believe. So it wasn't quite as flexible, but it was still better than paste down as far as flexibility goes. So here you can see the the size comparison also in the the tall the tallness of it uh, and the width and I already showed you the depth um, but it is quite a bit longer here mm, about an inch and a half two inches almost and then um, as far as oh yeah that's more than two inches probably two inches and a quarter or so. And then on this side, it's about an inch and a half um, wider. But the ghosting should be about the same. The, um, the words, the font, will be bigger, of course, on the, the uh, uh, thin line because they, um, obviously they had a bigger page to work with. Let me zoom in. So you can see all the ghosting. And you can see all the ghosting in that one. It's about the same. The light isn't hitting both the same, so it might not look quite the same. I gotta buy some lighting equipment because um, it's not cutting it <laughs> with what I have right now. Anyway, um, so this one has red under gold gilding, art gilding. Uh, it's got gold um, ribbons. It is a, I think it's called marble brown because you can see how, I think it's because you can see how it's a little darker here than it is over here, and it's just not even all the way throughout. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. Um, they all have stitching around except around the perimeter except the orange one of course because I rebound that one and I don't do stitching at the moment. I'm not a huge fan of stitching myself. Um, <laughs> I'm not a fan of uh, I'm not a huge fan of Bibles that have stitching around the perimeter only because um, I've explained this before probably but when it's stitched around the perimeter and I've had this happen before oftentimes the stitching will come undone and then you're left with a bible that is like i don't know i guess you can cut it off right and leave it like that but you you have to send it in to fix it unless you're really good at sewing or um i don't know if they it, and when you send it i don't know how how they work on it if they just fix that small part if they maybe make a um a knot right before um, the where the um, stitching got broken where the thread broke or tore whatever you call it and then they just sew a little bit or if they have to resew the whole thing i don't know how it works but you do have to send it in unless you're like i said unless you're really good at stitching and the reason the thing that they say about stitching is that it helps for so that this thing doesn't um the fold over doesn't come up, come off of the liner. So it's true, it, is, it does help. But in my experience, when it's just, when this starts raising because there's no stitching here, um, it's easier to fix at home by just putting a, a small amount of glue there and hammering it down just like you have it open here and it's coming up 
from on on here. You would just put. You might want to put some glue on like a a piece of paper or something. You dab it with a with a um, brush of some kind, really small one, and then you put the brush underneath, and then you put pressure, and your hand might be enough pressure. If you want more security, then you might hit it with a hammer lightly. And you can fix that at home, no problem. Well, in my opinion, no problem. Um, or you could send it in if you want. Same thing, if it has a, a lifetime warranty, you could send it in. But um, you don't really have the option of fixing it yourself if if it's stitching that comes undone. That's just my two cents. Some people aren't gonna. Some people aren't gonna care. Um, either way, that to them, they'll just send it in either way. So if they like stitching, then they'd go with stitching. I want to compare it to the um, original one. And there it is. Again, I rebound this one. So it's like half the size. And then I'll even get the second edition just to show the size differences on all of them. And uh, I already compared it with this one, but actually, this might be an example of what I'm talking about, or what I was talking about. I don't know if it's going to be visible. Right there, there's a thread that's that came off, came undone. I'm not picky, so I'm just gonna leave it. <laughs> I don't really care. But some people are very picky, and they care a lot about their Bibles, and they paid a ton of money for it. So they'll see something like that, and they're worried that something's gonna happen over time, and they'll have to send it in. And, well, I guess people like that would send in, even if it wasn't stitched, if it was coming undone, they wouldn't want to work on it themselves just to make sure that it gets fixed correctly. So, anyway, that, that, that was just continuing because I noticed that when I was, I hadn't noticed it before until right now that there's a, a, a stitching that came undone there. Anyway, these are my favorite Bibles to read from, uh, especially the the larger ones because it's just so it's just so nice and crisp with the line matching and everything they all have line matching they're all exactly the same um, except for the color um, a few in a few places but the paper is opaque enough maybe not definitely not as much as like the preacher's Bible but um, it's enough for me and with the line matching and everything it's a really nice Bible. If you guys have the money for it, I would definitely suggest it as a reader. Um, especially uh, this one because it's calfskin. I think it's under 100, 120 or so. Um, so it's a really good uh, investment, I think. And then if it if it ends up getting coming undone, the cover because it's a um, it's paste down, then you can have it rebound later. And you can save money, as opposed to rebinding one that you already spent two hundred and what is two hundred and twenty now, and then having to have it rebound again because it came and it broke or whatever. All everything will come to an end. Uh, God's word will last forever, as in His actual words. But the paper and this and the and the leather will, um, will come to an end. So with that I will end this video too. This video will come to an end now. <laughs> So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. And if you have any ideas of what kind of videos I should do next, please let me know. Thanks for watching.